Hi, I'm Angie and you're watching Dante's 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 Vaccinating. Now check this out. If any of you guys want to learn how to speak and read the original biblical Hebrew words, I want you to go over to zionlawschool.org. You will receive an overview of Phoenician Hebrew, grammar, parts of speech, nouns, verbs, prepositions, etc. This brother that founded this website, he's a doctor and he's a neighbor of mine, at least in a neighboring country because you know I live in Thailand and he lives in Vietnam. Now he's also selling three books and each book that you buy comes with free online live courses. He has Phoenician Hebrew one-on-one, -on -one, I Can Read and 911 Iber Yath Rescue. So if you wanna learn more about your roots and you wanna learn how to speak the original biblical Hebrew language, I want you guys to go over to zionlawschool.org. Dante's Box Nation, what's going on guys? So ever since Tyson Fury beat Deontay Wilder in the rematch, we haven't really heard him say too much about a rubber match with Deontay Wilder. But he finally said something today on Good Morning Great Britain where he talked about punishing Deontay Wilder even worse in the third fight once we get through this pandemic successfully. And there's a very, very good chance that Tyson Fury is right. He may go in there and beat Deontay Wilder even worse than he did in the second fight. It's possible. It's also possible that Deontay Wilder, he gets lucky with that right hand just one more time in his career. But Tyson Fury clearly proved that Wilder's right hand is not going to be enough to at least guarantee him a win. There is no doubt in my mind that Tyson Fury is a better boxer than Deontay Wilder. But that could be said about 30% of Deontay Wilder's previous opponents. They were better boxers than Deontay Wilder. He just made up for that with his right hand. Gerald Washington was a better boxer than Wilder. Uh, Luis King Kong Ortiz was, and of course Tyson Fury was and is. Which is why, once again, I do not understand why would Tyson Fury need to cheat in any of the fights with Deontay Wilder. As much of an advantage that he already has over Deontay Wilder. In the second fight, he goes in the fight 40 pounds bigger, heavier than Wilder. And we have this situation with his gloves. I keep telling you guys, Tyson Fury cheating and Tyson Fury beating Deontay Wilder's ass, as Tyson Fury fans will put it, are two entirely different conversations. And the reason why this has to be pointed out is because I keep hearing fans say, it doesn't matter if he cheated, he beat his ass. And he beat his ass because he was the better fighter, so it doesn't matter if he cheated. Even if he was punching with his bare knuckles in his left hand, he was doing most of the damage in a fight with his right hand. So as you guys see in that clip, even Tyson Fury's own trainer contradicts fans saying, oh, well, he beat him with his right hand. They were completely focused on Tyson Fury using that left hand, a glove that was clearly tampered with. I mean, guys, let's just be honest. Have you ever in your life, I mean, just to put this in a perspective that even a racist could understand, imagine Floyd Mayweather beating Canelo easy as hell like he already did. Imagine him doing this to Canelo, to Manny Pacquiao. Also imagine Andre Ward beating Kovalev twice as he just did. And then we get images of Andre Ward or Floyd Mayweather's glove being at the bottom of the glove to where you can see the wraps hanging out. You can see corner men sliding the glove back and forth. You can see blood stains on Floyd Mayweather or Andre Ward's hand wrap, only one hand wrap, at the corner of the left hand, all of these irregularities, do you think you're gonna have any of the same people right now saying, it doesn't matter, he beat their ass, it doesn't matter, Kovalev got his ass whooped, Ward beat his ass, it doesn't matter, 
Floyd Mayweather, he beat Canelo's ass. He beat Manny Pacquiao's ass while he was older than Manny Pacquiao. So you guys need to let it go and stop crying. You think they would ever say that? Of course they wouldn't say that. Because Floyd Mayweather and Andre Ward, they don't have their hope insurance. If Tyson cheated, they say let it go. It's so funny because these are the fans that still haven't even let go of Manny Pacquiao losing to Floyd Mayweather, Canelo losing to Floyd Mayweather, Kovalev losing to Andre Ward, Jose Benavidez losing to Terrence Crawford, Juan Manuel Marquez losing to Tim Bradley, Brandon Rios losing to Tim Bradley. Matter of fact, every single time a black fighter beats a non-black fighter, they always have an excuse that they stick with. For the rest of their life, they stick with the excuse. But then when they see someone who has clearly cheated because it's caught on a camera, that's when they say, no, nah, stop crying. This guy did nothing wrong. He won fair and square. Never, not one time did they say this when it was the other way around. See, this is the difference from me and you racist fans out there. When my guy loses, and when I say my guy, I'm talking about my countryman, the man that comes from my country. When my country loses, like Deontay Wilder lost to Tyson Fury, right after the fight, I gave Tyson Fury the credit he deserved. I completely praised him in my post by video minutes after he completely dominated Deontay Wilder. And not only did I praise him, but you had tons of black people in the comment section praising Tyson Fury for his win. But once again, whenever it's the black guy, Whenever it's Floyd Mayweather, Andre Ward, Terrence Crawford, Errol Spence, whenever it's someone like that and they beat the non-black fighter, you will never see any of the non-black fans that supporting Tyson Fury right now, you will never see any of them in the comment section congratulating Floyd Mayweather, congratulating Ward, congratulating Terrence Crawford. They're either nowhere to be found or they're making excuses for why the black guy won. And listen, everything that I tell you guys is the whole truth. It can be backed up with facts. That's what I love about YouTube. Everything is documented. You guys can go on any of my post fight videos and just look at the comments and it will corroborate everything that I'm telling you right now. You will never see these guys posting comments congratulating a black fighter for winning the way you heard me congratulating Tyson Fury for winning. Deep down, all of us, and when I say all of us, I truly mean all of us knows that boxing is a racially divided sport, especially in America. I mean, when you have Mexican fans who live in America and they're commenting, posting comments like, hey, your boy lost, give it up. Let me tell you guys something. I actually watched that fight out here in Thailand with a whole bunch of fans from America, from the UK, from Australia. One of the boxing fans was a brother straight from the UK and he was proudly rooting for Tyson Fury. You see the difference from America and the UK? You got black guys, white guys, Middle Eastern guys. They're all pulling for their countrymen. But in the States, you have the non-black Americans that are rooting and pulling for Tyson Fury more than the UK fans are pulling for Tyson Fury. Matter of fact, the majority of the resistance that I see in the comment section when it comes to like the most emotional fans, stop talking about this, you bastards, you black bastards and you this and you that, usually those comments don't come from UK fans. In fact, 98% of the time, they are always coming from someone who lives in America. Regardless if they're first or second generation American or they're all American. So, I mean, just think about it for a second. How can someone say this has nothing to do with race when you have fans from America saying your boy lost because he's black, which he's telling you, he ain't my boy, cause ain't no way I would ever root for no damn black guy. So that's your boy. This is what I mean when I say these fans have gotten so comfortable with being racist that they casually say things, not even knowing that they're exposing themselves 
as racist. Now I'm going to show some love to my sponsors real quick and then I'm going to be back with my closing thoughts. Salute to Dante's Boxer Nation, the best brand in the land, baby. And to all of the DBN family, I would like to take the opportunity to introduce myself. I go by Tank Commander Zulu and I represent the Real Man Movement. I have a new YouTube channel, y'all, and I would like everyone to become a subscriber. On the channel, I deal with positive male enforcement. I deal with combat connected and trauma connected PTSD. I deal with the community builders inside of the community and see if they are really representing us or not. I bring on interviewers that represent the community and who have impacted the community, community in a positive way. So don't forget, and I please invite everyone to subscribe to Tank Commander Zulu and the Real Man Movement. Fire in the hole, baby. If you guys are looking for more great content and a website that covers everything from sports, business, politics, technology, hip hop, and even more, you need to go over to rapstreamtv.com. The website is ran and owned by Sire. They'll keep you guys updated on everything. You know, when Floyd Mayweather beat Jose Luis Castillo twice, because he beat him twice, even though the first fight was close, you have a lot of Floyd Mayweather detractors that will say to this day, once again, this is why I always think it's funny when people say, oh, let it go, let it go. You know, who cares if Tyson Fury cheated? He won, let it go. You have fans that still haven't let go the first Castillo Mayweather fight. Every time you bring up Floyd Mayweather's name, someone who doesn't like Floyd, they will always say, oh, well, he lost to Castillo. And the way they say it, they say it as if the rematch doesn't even matter because they're so focused on the first fight, right? And, and let me clear something else up because a lot of fans that say, oh, well, Floyd, he lost to Castillo, et cetera, et cetera. I've heard some people say even Jim Lampley and Larry Merchant, they said it as if they're so impartial that that's all the validation you need is for Larry Merchant and Jim Lampley to say it, the two grand wizards of the decafs. But forget about that. You know, when that fight came on after the fight, there's no doubt Jim and Larry did say they thought that Floyd Mayweather lost the fight. But then the following week when they re-aired the fight, right before they went on air, Jim Lampley surprisingly admitted he said, you know, who knows? He said, maybe we got it wrong because after we thought that Castillo had won the fight, we asked 12 of the boxing writers that were sitting ringside and eight out of the 12 had Floyd Mayweather winning the fight. So all you fans that once again keep saying that, you need to stop crying. Stop crying and let it go. Your boy lost and USA won as they often do. I mean, that's what you guys said about Tyson Fury. So practice what you preach. But the reason why I'm mentioning that fight, I told you they focus so much on the first fight. They don't even care about the fact that Floyd Mayweather did something that a lot of fighters don't do today. Whenever they have a dangerous opponent that almost beat them, how many fighters, you know, immediately turn around and give that opponent a rematch. Oscar De La Hoya never did things like that. Uh, Canelo Alvarez, he didn't do it with Edison Lara. The great Julio Cesar Chavez, he turned down the rematch with Pernell Whitaker. So if you're still talking about the first Castillo fight, then according to your logic, because once again, a lot of these people defending Tyson Fury, they're admitting that he cheated. They're just saying, so what he cheated? He's a better fighter and it didn't matter that he cheated. If you're using that logic, then that means even if he wins the third fight, you should be focusing on the first two fights where he cheated. And that should tarnish the third fight if he wins that one. But you're not gonna do that. You're not gonna prevent contradicting yourself because this has always been about race for you type of fans. You have boxing fans and you have race fans. And unfortunately, America has a huge shortage of boxing fans. That's all I got for now, guys. I'm on to the next one. What's up, DVN family? It's your boy, Nate Drink, checking in and asking you for your support on my channel, Nate Drink One, and also 
on my show channel, A Drink of Wisdom, which is comprised of myself, Jay Wise, and Cody Ward. I will be dropping new episodes every Thursday and Saturday morning. I also want to take this time to send out prayers and love to all the victims of the coronavirus. I'm with you. I hope you make it through. This is a dangerous time. Everybody got to practice social distancing. Stay safe. Keep your hands washed. And also, remember, make tomorrow better than today and make today better than yesterday. And you know what I'm going to do. I'm going to holler at you until next time, baby. Shout out to Dante Boxing Nation. Big supporter. I love you, big bro. And uh, let's keep this thing rocking like a cutoff stocking.